Okay, so this is a problem where we're looking for correlation. We're looking for R value. And we want to find the equation of the line, of the best fit line. Okay? So the first step is to talk about correlation, right? So we kind of want to look at this and say, where would a line go through all the points? Okay? And when you draw this line, it might be nice, it might be nice if you could make sure that it goes through a couple of specific points. But the key is just drawing the line in general. I don't know, man. I just put it. Okay? So you're going to cut the dots in half. Half the dots on top, half the dots on bottom. Okay? So let's do that first. So, let's just go... Okay, there we go. Good line. Okay, half the dots on bottom, half the dots on top, we're good. Okay? Next, how close are these dots to the line? Do they create a line? No. They're a little bit off the line, right? So, remember, the R value depends on what the correlation is. Is this a positive correlation or a negative, first of all? Positive. Positive. Why? Because, it's because the, the slope is up. positive, because it's going up from right to left. Good. Okay. Well, so, is, the it, is a positive correlation. We know that. Yeah, it's left to right. It's from left to right. Did I say right to left? Yeah. My bad. It's a positive correlation. Okay, so that means the R value is going to be positive. Okay, the other thing is, remember the R value for something like this, very close to a line, is going to be about 0.9. Was yesterday your first time recording? Not sure. No, two days ago. When it gets a little further out, okay, we're going to say about 0.8, 0.7. Further out, you get to a point 0.5, okay, and then when it gets, you know, pretty close to just random, with a little bit of positive correlation, we're going to say that that's close to point 0.2, okay. We're never, ever, ever going to get down to zero. We're never really going to get to one. Because one would be a perfect line. Zero would be absolute no correlation, which is very tough. Okay? And it is just data collecting. So in real life, it just doesn't happen often or very, very, very rare. Okay? So there's that. So what is this going to be? this one? Mm -hmm. About 0.8. Okay. So that's the easy part. Correlation, positive, negative, right? Negative slope, we're going to get a negative correlation. So when they're going like this, negative correlation. Now we got to be able to get the line, the best fit line. So this line that we just created, we want to look at where it goes through some points. And I see that it goes through this point and this point. Okay? So I want to look at it from this to this. And this becomes my difference in the x. Okay? And so what is the difference from 10 to 16? 6. 6. Okay? And then I want to look at the difference in the y's. So what is the difference between 90 and 110? What's the difference in y? 90 and 110. Uh-huh. 
20. Good. Okay. So with that, we can come up with our slope. The slope is equal to the difference in the y over the difference in the x. Pay attention. Because your parents will be watching this because this will be on YouTube. My wife on YouTube. She might when I tell her you're talking during my lecture. And there's proof right there. Oh, she's not. Did you hear that? He said you're not going to do anything. You might want to check that before I'm going to watch this on YouTube. Okay, so. No, all these parents are going to be like, really? <laughs> so here's, here's the thing this is the slope. The difference in y over the difference in x. Okay? So we have a slope and we know that it's what? 20 over 6? What's our favorite equation? Or my favorite equation? Anyone? That's right, y equals mx plus b. This equation will get us everywhere with linear. Okay? So we need to reincorporate this. We have some points here. We have the slope. We almost know where this is going through the y-axis, right? Okay? But we don't know exactly where. It looks like it's going through somewhere around 60, 58, something like that. But we need to figure out exactly by plugging it into the y equals mx plus b. So we're going to grab one of these points. You want the lower one or the bigger one? Bigger. Okay. So we'll grab this guy up here. And we have coordinates, right? The x coordinate is 16. The y coordinate is 110. So that's your x and your y. So you have y equals mx plus b. So we just plug it in. y equals mx plus b. We plug in y is 110. M is 20 over 6, and X is 16 plus B, okay? And so from there, we do the math, okay? Does 6 go into 16? No, but can we reduce it? Does any number go into 6 and 16? 2. How many times? 3 and 8. And so now we've got 8 times 20, which is 160 over 3 plus B equals 110. Okay? Now we're going to subtract 160 over 3. 3 from both sides. What is 160 over 3? How many times does 3 go into 16? 5. 5? Good. But how many left over? 1. 5 with 1 left over. Right? And how many times does 3 go into 10? 3. 3? With how many left over? 1. 1? So, Every single time, it's just going to be one left over, right? So that would be one left over the three. So 53 and a third. If I take that away from 110, right? If I take 53 away from 110, what do I get? 53 from 110. So three, or 50 from 110. Yeah. So 110 minus 50 going to give me 60. 3 from 60, 57, and a third from 57. Fifty-six, 56 and 2 thirds, right? So we have B, we have M, 
we have y equals mx plus b, and so we create it that way. y equals x, and then we plug in the m, 20 over 6, and we plug in the b, plus 56 and a third, and then we double check it. That seem about right, 56 and a third, yeah, it's about right. As long as that's zero, then it is. Okay? And that's how you do that problem. Okay? There's a lot of steps to it. It doesn't get any harder than that right there. You'll never get harder than fractions in your B. Okay? That's okay. I'll